Hi friends and welcome to my kitchen. I'm here today to tell you that you can make your own cloth diapers. All you need is just basic sewing experience and supplies and a few extra special things um, from the craft store and you can do it exactly um, how you like them and a lot more cost efficient. There are so many options out there. I'm not going to show you every cloth diaper because I haven't tried every cloth diaper. Um, this isn't the only cloth diaper. This isn't even the best cloth diaper. This is just my favorite and I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. So, um, first of all, a disclaimer to this whole video. I am a new mom and a very new mom to cloth diapering. So, be patient with me and if you have any tips, advice, tricks, um, suggestions, just please share them because I want to learn and we all are here to help each other. We need each other so reach out if you have any ideas, um, advice, anything like that. But I'm just going to share with you today what I really love so um, let's just get started. So first of all some supplies that you're going to need are going to be the polyurethane lined material that is at Joann Fabrics. There's a really cute little section, you might have to ask for it, it's very small, um, in Joann that is Babyville Boutique. And they have some really great uh, pattern books. They have really great material right there, all right there, as well as different um, accessories. So if you like to use the snaps, they have the the snaps um, like this and all different color varieties that go with the options they have for um, the PUL and they have tons of different options. I only have three here actually I have a few of the solid ones too but so I have this really cute woodsy animal one, this flower one and the uh, bananas for you with the little monkeys and they're so so cute. Um, also, if you want to get really creative and, and cutesy, they also have these little uh, appliques that you can just sew on. They're square. They're really simple. You don't have to sew around anything weird. What you're going to need is the PUL material and that is bought at Joann's or online. And you're also going to need some elastic. So I've used in this pattern that I'm going to show you is the one quarter of an inch elastic. Nothing fancy, just cheapo. You can get a little roll of it for like two bucks or something. Um, you're also going to need your snaps or Velcro and I'll show you that later what that's going to look like. You're also going to need um, just some basic sewing supplies. Obviously you'll need a sewing machine and you're going to need corresponding color of thread to go with your materials. You're going to need an iron and an ironing board. And those are really, really useful. Don't skip on that part. Um, and some straight pins. You'll need the snaps, um, the little snap pliers and the awl. And these are, I'll show you how to work this later. These were kind of expensive in my, in my opinion, but Amazon had them cheaper, but I had already bought it for, for 20 bucks at Joanne. So those are 20 bucks regular. Um, again, use a coupon, get them on sale. And um, you'll want to have a good pair of shears to cut your fabric. So that's it. Just really some simple, simple things. Um, oh, also one more thing. Um, the, the pattern. Okay, so the pattern, like I said, this that book has some patterns in it. Um, but I really just made my own. And I have the PDF version and it kind of prints out in just like four different pages and you just tape it all together and then you're able to cut out the pattern exactly how I have it here and that's what you want it to look like and there's one other part to it um, which is the gusset and it's on I haven't cut out yet but it's it looks kind of like a little I don't know boat or something I got it. I don't know. Anyway, okay. So that's all you need. That's it. So what I was looking for in a cloth diaper was something that I could have the cover and the liner. And if it was just a pee diaper, I could take the liner out, wipe out the inside, and use it again. Because I didn't want to invest in a lot of these cloth diapers. So I've made 
several of the covers and I also have found what I think is really, really perfect um, soaker for what I need. Um, I really like that this pattern has the double gussets and I also like that it's kind of fitted around the, the waist of the baby and I will show you, this is one that I purchased, um, it's by Best Bottom and I really like the idea so I kind of, I don't know if I stole their idea or was just inspired by their idea, but I love that they have the snaps that hold in the soaker. So I did that too. And that's just these, these snaps that we're gonna use for the closure. So when you get the PDF version that I have made up, it's gonna be in four parts and it's kind of just a rough, roughly drawn pattern. If you're used to really nice patterns, it's just gonna be a little different. So you need to cut and I'll show you, it's kind of confusing, but this corner right here, you really need that. So don't, don't start cutting here. So you need to start cutting, just cut around that. And then follow the lines. So I'm going to be using the monkey material. So what you want to do is, if you've done a lot of sewing before, you know there's a lot of putting the, let's see, um, oh, and it printed and it didn't put my arrow in there, but here's the arrow, <laughs> I'll go back and change that. Um, here's the arrow showing, place this edge on the fold of the fabric. So what that means is whenever you lay out your fabric, oh my gosh, I don't even know how much I got of this, but we are going to get a lot of cloth diapers out of this. <laughs> and also, if you think about it, this is probably the same material that they make the wet bags out of. So those wet bags can be very expensive and you can just make your own, I think. Find a nice bag pattern and just go to town, man. So what I like to do to reserve the fabric, because I don't want to make it in a weird place that I can't use the rest of my piece. So what I do is I go to the edge. So like I'm folding this only as much as I need for the pattern. So like this, this is the fold end right here. So I have my fold. So I'm going to place, and this is where your pins come in. So I'm going to place my pattern just right on that fold and you need to line it up right perfectly. So um, take your time in this part because this is basically the foundation for your whole pattern. So um, and then I'm going to use the straight pins as minimally as possible in this whole video. And you'll see because once you puncture this plastic P-Well material, it keeps the hole. And that's going to make leaks in your diaper. So I make it a point that I only put the pins where the stitches are going to be. So I won't put a pin here because that's right where their bum is. And you don't want the water to to seep out or water pee or poop to seep out there so you want to put the pins kind of lightly I only use about three or four and I just try and really really cut well without them or I've seen people use tape for this part um, I just kind of grew up using pins so I'm a little more comfortable with them but it's up to you so there's two there. I'm gonna put maybe three and maybe one more. But you can 
can see I'm putting them in all of the places that are not going to be this part of the diaper. So, Alright, and now you're ready, at least this part, to cut. So now, you have this piece, and you'll notice there are some little dots and circles on here. So those are, if you choose to do the snap enclosures, which I'm going to for this pattern, um, then you'll want to use these now before you take the pattern off of your material. So you're going to use this little awl, is what it's called. It's called an awl, and it's got a really pointy end. So be very careful, especially with littles around. Um, and what you're going to want to do is hold the back of your fabric really pretty securely um, so that it goes straight through. Obviously, be mindful of your fingers. Don't stab yourself because it would hurt. But this little tool is very sharp. So puncture all the way through. So you see that? That's all the way through. And right in the center of these, all the way through. And that's where you're going to put your little snaps. So you want to do the same thing with these six little dots. So again, watch your fingers, puncture, puncture. And this uh, little tool actually comes with the, uh, the gun, so you don't need to buy it separately or anything. is kind of dangerous. <laughs> I didn't really think about it. It's dangerous, but it kind of is. So you can't really tell probably too much, but you have your punctures all in a line here on the other side, and you have the two here. So, all right, and now you're done with the pattern, so you can go ahead and take it off. and put it aside. You can always reuse patterns. Even though you punctured it, it's super easy to reuse them again. All right, so here's your piece. Oh, and the gusset, I forgot. You can take that off too. So here's the pieces that we have. All right. So now we come to the part where we're using the iron. And if you have a, a standard iron, mine has a six numbered system. So I usually do about two with this. And you're gonna wanna test on maybe a little extra piece of the PUL material to make sure it's not too hot. Because I will tell you something right now, just think about it, whenever you heat plastic, it sticks and it, um, it will affect the integrity of the material. So, like for instance, if you stick it on itself, which is what we're gonna do like this, and then iron it, it's going to stick together and you're not gonna be able to get it apart. And we need to be able to get some of it apart, but also it, it causes it to not have a good waterproof um, property to it. So, don't iron it too hot and definitely test your iron on like a, a little extra piece that you may have around even this is a really small one you can iron it and see okay is this gonna be enough so I'm gonna iron and then okay it's not sticking to itself okay so I'm gonna show you okay this is super easy what we're gonna do is around every single edge we're going to fold and iron so that we crease it okay so that way we know where to sew and that we don't have to use pins to hold the fabric um, where we need it so the easiest way to do this I think is to start at the back and I'll give you a little hint when we cut this out everywhere that you saw these tabs these are where we're going to put the elastic so just in your mind remember these are going to be elastic okay so cut, or cut, um, fold. <laughs> okay, so you fold that down and 
and iron. Okay, and you're wanting to have a little bit, probably, see I'll show you. See, it's sticking already. So my iron is getting a little bit warm, so I'm just gonna turn it down a little. I'll lift it on there a little longer than I should have probably. Um, so your back here is right at one inch. I eyeball it because it's too much work. It's too much easier to just eyeball it because I know I've got plenty of room. And the this here is about three, let's see, three-eighths. Is that about three-eighths of an inch? It's so about three-eighths of an inch to a half on this. So just remember, this you're going to have to leave room for elastic. This you're just going to sew it. Okay? That makes a lot more sense in a minute. So go over with your iron. Super easy, okay? Do that around the whole entire outer edge, okay? So this is also an inch. Okay, so now you can't really tell because it's kind of unfolding, um, but I have creased all of the edges, except for this one that I somehow missed. Uh, um, and it might be tricky to go over these here, um, but just be patient, and I found that if you kind of un- uh, roll the fabric, kind of roll it back, it tends to do better. <laughs> My baby's over here like, who are you talking to, Mom? <laughs> Myself, I do that a lot too. Okay, so now you have all these folded and creased, okay? So the next step is to sew. We're gonna sew now. Oh, but first, <laughs> but more, there's more. The gussets, and I seem to have lost, there's our other one. So the gussets, you see it's kind of in the shape of a banana. So the straighter edge is the one you want to fold down to about half an inch. Because remember, you're going to have to put elastic in there. So just a little bit over half an inch. And you want to fold it down, fold it down. Do, 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 do. Okay. Like so. And again, this is, you want to be really careful. And you can kind of tell, yep, that I did it there. You can kind of tell that there's a little line. That is where I have kind of disrupted the entirety of the fabric. So there might be some leaks out of this one because of my iron being a little bit too hot still. I just get impatient. So I want it as hot as possible and to get done as quick as possible. I don't know why. Anyway, so maybe this one won't be so bad. Just be mindful of how long you're keeping your iron on, but I will tell you that it, it really helps when you are... Using the iron instead of the pins, you're still going to do less damage. So just make sure it doesn't stick to itself. If it sticks to itself, pull it off really quickly. Um, all right, so your gussets are creased now. Okay. And yes, ma'am. Okay. We're good to go. All right. So now let's move to the sewing machine. Um, again, with testing your fabric. You will want to sew on the polyurethane lines a little bit, just for one, for you to get used to it, and for two, so you can make sure that your sewing machine's not gonna do something wonky, and then your pad, your diaper cover is gonna be affected. Again, whenever, every time you puncture the material, it's basically another hole for 
um, for it to leak. So it doesn't really matter where you start, but a good thing to remember is where your tabs are. Now we're not going to sew the tabs yet. Okay. So first we're going to sew the other portions and I'll show you that's, there's a tab there. So we're going to sew these wings, skip the tab, this part, skip the tab, and then this wing. So go ahead and get sewing. So before you sew the sides, you need to go pin. We've already done it on this one, but you need to pin this longer curved edge like fabrics together, monkeys together. Okay, so you need to pin it <clears throat> like this and pin it kind of close to the edge again. Try not to puncture. And then you're going to want to sew as close to that edge as possible. Okay, so we didn't, we haven't sewn it yet, but that crease is still there. We're going to use the crease. But first you want to pin those raw edges together. Okay. Okay, so now what you have is your main piece and your gussets sewed onto the sides, like sides together, okay? But you still have that crease, so think of it like this. You want that crease, you want to fold along the crease again, okay? So it's kind of awkward just because again of the curve, but fold along that crease again. And remember, we have to put elastic in there, so it has to be big enough to fit your elastic. So it is. So this part, okay, I'll show you again. There's your, there's your piece, your fold is here. And you want to just fold along that edge again. And I'm not going to pin it because that's why I ironed it so that I could give it a good crease. And I'm going to start and I'm going to sew exactly on that previous seam because I don't want to make another line of holes for leaks. So now, so now you see we have that little casing. So we're going to have another one here. Remember, this is still folded. Oops. It actually stuck to itself. <laughs> so we have, that's what it kind of looks like. Okay, so we still are going to have that crease, but we also have this little case here to put your elastic in. So it's going to be it's going to be elastic down here and it's going to be elastic up here. Same with the other side. So now we're going to work on the second. That's it. And again you're going to have another piece of elastic in there. So make sure you are seam it keeps room so we can feed this through. Okay. 
This one's a lot easier. <laughs> this is straight across. So now we're going to be putting on the snaps if you choose to use snaps for your enclosure. And we're going to need 12 right here um, that are the Audi kind, not or the any kind. <laughs> so this one here. And it comes in two parts. So you have the back and the front. They go like that. So what you do is take the one that looks like a thumbtack where you made those punctures before just pop it in that little hole and then put this on the front and that's when you take your little pliers and you position it so that it's sitting right there in that little plastic part and you squeeze really tight and that causes it to look like that. So now you have your six and six here and what that's going to do is whenever you're finished you're going to have kind of different uh, sizes to button to. Alright and so we also put some little puncture marks on this side and those are going to be for your Audi you're going to need your Audi and then your thumbtack one so then you take and you just find where that puncture is but this time you want the thumbtack to go this way through the good side of the fabric and same thing, just set it right there in that seat and squeeze hard. And then there's that. So just do that part for both sides. Now the last two are going to be here and here, and I'll show you. On this one, I just used some of the soakers that I had and measured how long I needed it to be. And so if you have some that fasten in that you're going to use, you can use those to measure. So once you've put in your little snaps for your liner, then we're going to do our last step, which is to put in the elastic. So I'm going to use six inch uh, long pieces, I need five six inch pieces of quarter inch elastic. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece here and here and here and here and one on the back. So I think the back one is probably going to be easiest to do last. So I'm going to start with the gusset, the second gusset, and that's kind of the top gusset here. And um, let's see, I'll show you an easy way to feed it through if you have a safety pin that's not 
uh, probably just a little bit smaller than the opening. And you take it and you attach it to the piece of elastic. And then just feed it through. And you're able to kind of scooch it down and just kind of wiggle it down the casing. But be mindful of your little tail. So when you get close to the end of the tail, you're gonna hang on to that. Because we're reducing this about halfway, so. Okay, so. And at this point, if you want to kind of cut off that's right where that elastic comes out too. To just make it a little bit less bunchy right there, you can cut some of this material so it's kind of straight up or a little bit of an angle. But then you're gonna want to pin. Okay, so then when you get to the end, you wanna make sure you hold on to your elastic and pin it in. Okay, and this is your first gusset, or your second gusset, rather. We did the second gusset first, that's a little confusing. Okay, so now that you have all the casings with the elastic in them and, and pinned, now what you want to do is sew the elastic into the casing. So you would do stitching here and here, just the length of the casing, going this way, and there, and here and here. Okay, and then this is this raw edge, you want to kind of tuck it in. So after you've done that, you'll go back and you'll just kind of Fold that and sew it right here so that it's finished and tucked in. And that way you have a finished, a finished gusset. So now that you have sewn here so that these come together, and you've sewn in your casing so your elastic stays. So your elastic stays. Keep on the back here. Your diaper cover is essentially finished. So that's all there is to it. And I will show you um, in the soaker. And there you go.